Hello my soccer universe to a long overdue review of all the happenings in Austria because ever since the league in Austria restarted or the uh, you know cup and league I couldn't make a review video because I got sick and that also means we have not only three rounds in the Bundesliga to uh, cover but in addition we have also a full cup round so there is a loads of things to talk about uh, so the opening will be rather short on my part. I just want to say that um, next video I'm gonna make another video that probably will only focus on Austria, but potentially now nah, I don't know yet quite because there's also a big uh, game in the Bundesliga. Uh, but it is this Friday the new stadium of Lusk is opening, and I'm very happy to announce I got uh, the I got tickets for these and for the remaining games uh, in the season with the family, which were a like, pretty good deal and. I will of course report from that because this is the most exciting thing that happening uh, soccer wise here with me at the moment. Uh, it, the restart for Lask was so and so, uh, you know, two wins, one draw, however also two red cards. So there's a little bit, uh, I'm not so quite convinced yet of their form. So it's all about the stadium, um, but uh, it's of course Sturm Graz who with a really rough start uh, getting ousting Salzburg from the cup then beating Rapid and also uh, winning uh, this past week weekend they are really flying high and similar can be said actually Salzburg except for the cup they keep on going but when we look at Germany uh, we actually seemingly have a title race yes Bayern are still the overwhelming favorites as we will see but at the moment we have three teams on level on points it's just that only berlin could not get the win over schalke to actually make it up there but it is dortmund that have been winning 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 and while it was at the beginning of the year not always convincing this time they are really played themselves into form and they're actually quite exciting to watch this is a dortmund team that can potentially do something because they're getting their results again bayern losing was maybe a freak result especially due to the early red card and overall Bayern seemed to be on a uh, way up and yes Dortmund will still have to get something off Bayern before we can really count them among the favorites uh, or to say that they will win the title but this is the tightest Bundesliga in a long time and I think the reputation of Julian Nagelsmann is also a little bit hanging in the threads there because he's seen as this coaching genius however he gotta deliver titles and not only the Bundesliga he needs to deliver more than that so yeah already talked enough about those two let's get into I will start in Austria with the cup round which started actually on uh, the first Friday weekend on Friday with Rapid Vienna getting a late equalizer in Wolfsburg and then winning it in uh, um, overtime uh, also 106 108 by each scoring those two the big one though was Salzburg against Sturm this was a game that Sturm actually controlled yes Salzburg had a uh, goal in the first half this this love for offside but overall Sturm was really well in that game and uh, press Salz Salzburg was uh, with loads of energy got a deserved uh, go ahead goal and only when Salzburg then uh, laid on kind of turn turn down they get the equal through Dedic but it didn't look all that uh, great and what I've found so surprising that in, in the overtime period that Sturm were actually closer to scoring that, that goal penalties Zakaria misses then the first one for Sturm however Kiergaard misses the fourth one for Salzburg and Sturm is then uh, perfect Wüthrich converts the sixth one and Capaldo, the guy who got the win against Roma, misses his penalty, the, the sixth one. And so it is Salzburg out of the cup, which basically, this was a big thing because Salzburg have been have had a monopoly on the cup, I think, since 2017 when Sturm beat them in the final. So having this cup suddenly open, that's huge because now everyone thinks they can win the cup. However, you have to look at Sturm Graz first and foremost. Reed got rid of Sportclub uh, in a match that was rather tight in the first half, but then right after that, Sportclub combusted with a penalty uh, that Lang converted, and then Gusic gets a yellow red. Uh, 
within a minute of the kick kicker when my Mikic makes it to, uh, to, to nil. Uh, read a through and Lars completely outplayed uh, Klagenfurt left and right. Just cannot score or when the score it was an offside goal, you know. Um, then they finally get the go-ahead goal. Uh, it was a little bit like the, uh, the goal that United scored against City uh, where, it, you know, it did feel offside, but in the end it wasn't because uh, Liu Ubicic doesn't touch the ball. It was a deserved go-ahead goal. But then Klangfurt gets a red card and Lars cannot gets an actually in trouble. This was the troubling thing and this is the one thing that I have always been saying over over the years watching Lask that um, under Kubar or this season that they can play great for 60 minutes. They usually only get one goal and then they don't finish off games. This is the one that the one negative. But semi-final of the cup and we had this past weekend even the uh, draw for the cup. Lask have to play away to Sturm. Now at first this is probably the on paper, the toughest uh, draw, however, of the remaining opponents. Uh, Pete is not an opponent that uh, Lask likes. Reed, as we will see from the Bundesliga, is also a rather tough uh, opponent because it's a derby. Sturm, Lask have been doing relatively well, especially in Graz. So I don't think it's that bad of a draw. It is for now 4th and 5th of April, but we have to see uh, is these are all not fixed. Uh, what's prefix is that on the 1st of May. There will be the final. Um, yeah, I think it could be an interesting uh, one, that's for sure. Let's talk about the two rounds that happened in the Bundesliga when the, on the restart, this was 10th of February, uh, Sturm Graz against Rapid was a really uh, open game. Yes, dominated by Sturm, who had just come off the win against Salzburg. Um, and lay, lay later on Sturm, just with the depth, depth of, of, of the court, and overwhelmed and got a stoppage time winner through Affengruber. Pretty huge win there and kind of also settling rapid. Yeah, maybe a little bit in danger. Salzburg, no trouble beating Lustenau. Uh, Tirol, 2-1 at Wolfsburg. Wolf 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 Wolfsburg having a rough start as well. Lask's win against Altach, I mean, it's the same story in, in a way. Nakamura gets an early goal, um, kind of willed it in <laughs> after, you know, he had a shot saved and Bob 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 gets it in. Um, and then again, not converting for uh, further chances, but having a larger control of the game. Then Jovicic gets sent off with a yellow red. And then it was hanging on time. Fortunately, Altach cannot convert, and in the end, it was a safe-ish win. Uh, but watch out for Altach. You know, not only Miramiris Club, but closer, they also have to now Aloni in goal for Milan, and then Lasetic also from uh, from Milan. I think this is a team that probably will not have to do much uh, with going uh, down. Uh, a huge one in the relegation battle, Hartberg winning late in Ried, a game that Ried largely controlled, so that was one. And then Austria win against Klangfurt, that was for top six, more, more or less, and that was a huge win for Austria win, because that probably is enough for them to qualify for, for the top, top, top six, because Klangfurt um, did not recover well from that. And then on the past weekend, it was actually Saturday, a complete derby day. We had a Corinthian derby, we had a Styrian derby, we had an upper Austrian derby. Uh, so, and in every case, it was, you know, it's the capital of the province against uh, a smaller team. And while Sturm and Lask were favored, it is Klangfurt who are actually at the moment still the smaller team. And they were largely outplayed by Wolfsburg, who got a big win in Klangfurt, uh, looking like they will be in the bottom uh, six for the upcoming, for the playoff round. Sturm, a very routine performance, getting a 2-1 win at Hartberg, uh, who actually said goodbye to their longtime goalie. And what I already made the one minute video uh, about Reed and Lask. I don't know, Reed a number one relegation candidate, however, against Lask, they always put in a performance. And they la last tried to play nice, and Reed came in with with, with a fight that was missing, um, and probably Reed could 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 taken the lead. There was also a penalty shot for Lask because a Reed player had the arm like that, and it hit here. Um, yeah, I mean with black and white glasses, I probably wanted the penalty. I always read that get a penalty because Lukaneda I mean should have probably probably been goal early, but then Lukaneda dives and saves it with his arm. Okay, it's a clear red card penalty, 
And at that moment I thought, oh, there's no coming back from that because I didn't see that. Okay, Kuba made, made some trades. Lusk dug in, Lusk fought without creating many uh, chances. It was actually the reverse uh, dangerous on the counter attack. But in the end, Nakamu it's again Nakamura. Nakamura, Nakamura, Nakamura. He said at the moment the best player for Lusk, who assisted by Uso and Yurik uh, quietly from uh, Slavia Prague, who gets the equalizer. A little bit out of nowhere, and I have to say this was a lucky, a lucky draw. But hey, we're not losing in Ried, that's at least something. Then uh, Austria-Vienna, yes, losing to Lustenov. I still think with the way that the other results went, uh, they still will make it in, in the total top six. Uh, Salzburg winning the West Derby, as it's called, but you know, it's not really a derby, it's the West Derby between, uh, between Salzburg and Wacker Innsbruck, who... Uh, nowhere and then Rapid beat Altach 3 nil. Altach also desperately needing some wins. So um, looking at the uh, standings now, uh, it is pretty clear the top three will qualify or already. Rapid also solidified the spot. I think Tirol and it's uh, whether Austria Vienna can be caught, but Klagenfurt, yeah, two points back, but there's not really much hap happening. Maybe Lustenau of all of all square could get in, but I think it's Austria Vienna uh, that look the safest there. Um, and that's also uh, reflected in the expected standings. As I said, it, it is Austria Vienna could fall out, but it's more likely that they will be in. Uh, as for uh, the overall picture, Salzburg, of course, will be champions. Sturm second, Lask third. Uh, but, you know, then it gets a little bit more fuzzy there. And I think the relegation battle could be in, in the interesting one with Hartberg, Alter, Ried all looking relatively even at the moment. So that will be uh, interesting to watch uh, come a little bit later in the spring. Let's talk German Cup. Uh, I will go through the results. I saw actually every single game a little bit. Um, the... First one is no notable that Stuttgart scored the longest own goal in German history. Actually, in Austria, there was a similar one scored, but that was from the own half. Uh, Mavropanos, a back pass into the, from a, I think from a, a throw in. It was a really weird, weird one. And Paderborn, hang on, but Stuttgart then actually turning it on, Gilles Diaz and Girassi deep in stoppage time getting the win. Um, Union Berlin then beating Wolfsburg despite being 1-0 down uh, very, very early on, but Knoche and then Behrens turned to, 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 to around and that was kind of also a breaking point for Wolfsburg because from that moment on Wolfsburg went down and Union again 2-1 wins. Except for last weekend Union win 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1, 2-1. Uh, in El Plastico, um, Leipzig easy over Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim in terrible shape, terrible shape changed the coach as uh, well shortly thereafter. It is now former Stuttgart coach uh, Materazzo who is at the helm there. Uh, but that was an easy win for Leipzig overall as was uh, Bayern's 4-0 over Mainz with Jean Cancela making his debut, immediately assisting Trooper Malting uh, and then it was just uh, the Bayern show. And that came a little bit out of now because when we look at the Bundesliga, Mainz had a, have a really, really good run at the moment. But 4-0 for, for Bayern, more moving on. Uh, another uh, a, a local derby, a southwest derby, derby between Sandhausen and Freiburg, was a really tight affair. And very later on, Lienhardt and Peterson decide that for Freiburg. A super intense one, also a derby, Hessen derby. Between Frank Frankfurt and Darmstadt, those two cities are relatively close together. And that is Europa League champion against the current leader in the second Bundesliga. So this was actually a really good one. And it was a good game. Uh, Kolomani gave them an, a gift Frankfurt early, early in that moment. You had the thought that, uh, yeah, Frankfurt is going to eat Darmstadt alive, but they didn't kick in the next gear. And then out of nowhere, Hansak gets an equalizer. And then with, within two minutes, he makes it uh, two. And it's the game completely turned on its head. And uh, then Darmstadt had the, oh, the, up, the upper hand, but uh, Rafael Boré. Uh, assist by Götze gets before the half an equalizer and then it hung in, in the balance. This was a tense affair, but Kamada go ahead goal and very late on Kolomani, of course, getting a second, seeing them through. 
New against Fortuna Düsseldorf. I didn't expect much, but that was actually a really interesting one because Nürnberg did not deserve anything out of that game. Fortuna Düsseldorf totally controlled Koldova, got the go ahead goal through Kovnatsky. Um, and then it was just, it seemed like they were just missing to make the second goal, literally. They didn't make it, and then deep is top. So, so I really, I, I, I remember they, they had 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 they like suddenly they commit uh, balls forward. And I said, wouldn't it be something if they not just? This looks like this could be some something happening. And then a ball goes here, ball goes there, and then Duman takes a shot that's deflected. It's in the net. One one. It's goes to overtime, and again, Düsseldorf hitting the crossbar, having major chances cannot make it and there's even a uh, Nuremberg uh, a player is sent off but they just barely make it into penal penalties and then the penalties were also very very interesting because uh, Nuremberg go ahead but I think it was the second by Duman that was initially saved by the goalie but then uh, the goalie moves so it had to be retaken also some something and, and uh, he makes it 2-1. Two, 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 um, all the Düsseldorf penalties were good except the one by Niemietz uh, that got then saved before that a Schindler penalty just makes it in the net because it goes from crossbar uh, keeper in. So really a weird one and then Shuranov makes it. This was a lucky win for Nuremberg overall. And then Bochum against Dortmund. Bochum actually also in really good form for at home, made it a, a good game. I mean, the go-ahead goal of uh, Emre Can from the midway line, because the goalie was out, was very, very, very remarkable. But then they get the equalizer through, through Stöger. Fortunately for Dortmund, Reus getting very quick, quick, quick second goal. But it was a really hard-fought win for Dortmund. And so we have also the draw. Dortmund have to go to Leipzig, Frankfurt against Union Berlin, two really big games. Also Bayern against Freiburg. I mean, uh, it's really that Nürnberg, Stuttgart, Stuttgart, both of those will, we will be happy because the rest are all pretty high profile games, I would say, also to be played in early April. We have not really announced when the uh, games will be played. Let's run through three Bundesliga rounds uh, to uh, fin finish, finish it out. I mean, uh, Dortmund against Freiburg, this was definitely one where the focus was on. However, a very early uh, yellow red through Sedilia, who got two uh, yellows in the 15th and 17th, said it early. Schlotterbeck gets the one over one nil. However, out of nowhere, Lukas Höhler makes me uh, equal. Then Adeyemi gets off the Schneid, scores his one. Sebastian Allaire gets his first goal coming back uh, from uh, Kent and then it's a route and Dortmund ra run away with, with, with that one. Uh, Frankfurt on the back of Kolomirny, who is probably the outstanding player at the moment, moment in the Bundesliga, beat Hertha, although there was not much that they needed to do. Köln uh, in a very tense one against Leipzig and nil-nil. Union Berlin, also seen on the way days. Uh, get another 2-1 win late on. I mean, uh, Behrens gave, gave, gave to give the lead and Ingwertsen uh, equalized by penalty for uh, Mainz, but also after Jordan uh or PFOC, however you call it, get the win for Union Berlin, who again, keep up there. Uh, Gladbach, Schalke is a team that everyone says will get regular, but they have been picking up points. There's a reason why they're up there. Uh, Bremen win at Stuttgart, a pretty big, big one, and then all the eyes were on Bayern, who had been drawing too many games. They get the win at Wolfsburg, who had been actually pretty good up until that point. But then uh, it all fell down for them after the, uh, losing to Bremen. They also fall to Bayern and it was uh, rather easy. After 20 minutes, it was already 3-0. Yes, a yellow red for Kimmich made it a little, a little bit tight, but uh, especially Murciala looking really good there. Um, it also continued then against Bochum and this is a big one because Bochum and Bayern the fans were friends so they actually celebrated but Bochum gave getting quite some counter till Thomas Müller made it, made it one nil and then it was only one uh, winner there. Stuttgart actually had for a long time a lead in Freiburg and Freiburg only turned it around very late through uh, Grifo uh, who converted to penalties. So uh, Stuttgart actually 
overall in performance was trending in the right right direction but not getting the results yet hoffenheim another horror horror show losing 3-1 at home to leverkusen uh mainz 3-1 over augsburg again I tell you mainz is getting good good results uh dortmund uh, workman like with a uh, win at Bremen. Bremen actually was well in the game, however, Bino Gittens and Julian Brandt make it a 2 0. And the big one between Leipzig and Union Berlin. Leipzig had probably a little bit of lucky one, one in lead. Habera, brilliant shot, equalizes, then Knoche uh, penalty. The Knoche converts and it turns around to Union Berlin. And this is a pretty hot duel at the moment because Union and Leipzig, they are not friends, especially from the Union side. And then one of those VAR goals where uh, Paulsen scores an equalizer, but in the build-up, an Union player tries to clear the ball, uh, you know, with his heel uh, behind his back and it just bounces off him. So... Um, and then was 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 the discussion? Was this a controlled back pass or not? And because it seemingly was not controlled, it was counted as an offside. So uh, the touch didn't count. If this was would have been controlled, it was not. This is one of those rules that no one really understood, and it caused actually quite some stir uh, there. But it seemingly is a new rule, but one that I think neither the fans nor anyone else is really buying if we're honest. Uh, Hertha got a big win over Gladbach 4-1. Uh, that was a sign. And then Köln against Frankfurt also. A very uh, low level for, for his first half. And then Köln celebrating the 75th birthday with special jerseys running away. And that was came a little bit unexpected. Hübers and Skiri scoring uh, the two goals. And then we go into the past weekend. Again, uh, loads of war discussions, especially by Bayern Munich with uh, Coach Nagelsmann going ballistic. Upa Meccano gets sent off in the eighth minute for um, crossing, I think it was, um, uh, yeah, a Gladbach player. Let's put, uh, le, le, let's put one of the French strikers. Uh, the touch was probably little, but in the end, um, I can see why it's given red, but pro probably would have been nice to look at it. And this was, uh, he was not happy. With a man less. At that point, Bayern probably should have already taken the lead. But with a man less, that was a level contest. And Stindl gives them the lead. Brilliant equalizer from Davis on to Chupo Moting level. But then Hofmann scores one to Ram a second. And Matthias Tell only uh, pulls one back very, 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 very late. But that was a huge win for Gladbach. And Gladbach always gets wins against Bayern. And then, of course, with the whole Nagelsmann, he went absolutely ballistic afterwards because the referee didn't even want to discuss this situation. Uh, Leipzig, an easy win at Wolfsburg. Uh, there were other uh, big wins. I think Freie Freiburg, the tunnel at Bochum, that's a big point because Bochum have been winning uh, games at home. Stuttgart, a very big win in the relegation fight. Köln, 3 0 over Frankfurt, 3 0 in uh, 0 3 in Stuttgart. Uh, really in interesting. Frankfurt also bounced back with an easy 2 0 win. Who is scoring? Kolomiani gets the second one after Friedel on goal in the first one. With the loss to Gladbach, Bayern could have lost first in the table. However, in one of the dullest games of the entire season, only Berlin Schalke play out a 0 0. Dortmund, on the other hand, keep rolling in their newly uh, all black jerseys again. Uh, the Yemi and Marlen uh, get it early going uh, to start pulls from back right after that, but then Reus and Julian Brandt mix it. 4-1, however, there was a little uh, injury also to Ade Yemi that might cause some trouble. We have to see how that is going. Uh, but Dan Dan Marlen is scoring. That's a big one too. And then a really wild one to end it all uh, between Leverkusen and Mainz. Leverkusen missing an early penalty. Then Mainz get, 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 get the lead. Amiri equalizes just before that. Barrero gives Mainz a 2 1 lead. Leverkusen, like I did against Monaco, came out storming. Get the equalizer with Wirtz and Schick on. Get the equalizer. It seems all be going their way. And then a holding in the penalty box, oddly, sent uh, Sanset off. Ingwertsen makes it 3 2. And there was no way back for Leverkusen, who are also trending a little bit in the wrong direction at the moment. Uh, especially when I look at it, Leverkusen is uh, now mid-table, lost three out of the last five. Up top, we have three teams with 43 points. It's a title race. 
I'm saying it's a title race. However, it's still very much Bayerns to lose. If you just look, they lost only twice this season, but they get a lot of draws, which is untypical for them. And that's actually what allows Dortmund and Union Berlin to hang in there as well. But we see also Leipzig uh, kind of favored to make it into the Champions League. But it's really, really tight up there. And also on the bottom, I think starting from Augsburg, I hope that Köln and Bremen are not implicated, but starting from Augsburg, we're looking at a real re relegation battle where the rule seems to be if you have blue as your color, you are down in the relegation fight. All four blue teams fighting against re 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 relegation. And actually, I know that Bochum probably ratings-wise don't look good, but they actually are playing very well at home, whereas Hoffenheim is really trending in the wrong direction. Hertha and Schalke are two teams that I don't really trust. Schalke would need to pick up wins, which is what they're not doing. They're picking up, up, up draws. That's usually not enough. Also, I want to point out in the just extended Bayern actually have a negative. That tells you how bad their season is going at, at the moment. They're already six points behind where, um, expectations uh, overall. Uh, expected five seven is still Bayern with a very comfortable lead, but let's see how this will be uh, ending up at the moment. We have Leipzig and Union rounding out the top four. On the bottom, again, it's the blue guys. Uh, Hertha and Schalke going down and Bochum in the relegation battle. But I think it's, Schalke seems to be a foregone conclusion. But I think the other two, that could be quite interesting. Give you also upcoming games. We have a big one Sunday evening. Bayern against Union. That's one against three. That could be a rather big one. Dortmund will probably get a win at Hoffenheim. Um, I'm also looking at Leipzig against Frankfurt. That's also a pretty big matchup right there. And then one for the relegation. Stuttgart, Sch uh, Schalke, Stuttgart. Schalke, Stuttgart. And then a week later, I may do a video before we have Dortmund against Leipzig. Another huge one. And then, you know, they're also playing the cup against each other. Where Stuttgart uh, hosts Bayern, uh, Wolfsburg, Frankfurt, uh, Oliver Glasner Derby, also an interesting one. Uni Berlin against Köln is always a tight one because those play in a very similar style. Super long video, but there were so many things happening. It's really interesting in both leagues at the moment. I mean, it's super exciting, a new stadium coming in Linz. We have a title race in Germany and we, as always, have a really tight relegation battle. Any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below if you want to add anything or if you have a question and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.